Hello guys and welcome back. This is chapter 5 of our pipeline production series and I would like to go over another workflow for the hair. And uh, this is kind of a workflow that you might use for the body as well. Um, I have a character that I've been working on for a while that I've uh, converted to uh, C4D to A and um, I use a UDEM workflow for her where each one of the uh, the DAS components is separated into a tile. So we can do the same thing with the hair and then we can get a really nice naming convention for our network where all the materials for the hair are combined into one object. So let me go over how that kind of sort of works. So right now we have the hair strands and the skull cap separated. So what we can do is we can actually get rid of the skull cap and we can call this uh, test a hair material instead and we can go ahead and delete all the materials on her character except for one and then we can get rid of the selection here in the material and so now we have a textured object that pretty much has all the material combined into one material. Now we need that skull cap back and uh, actually surprisingly it actually looks pretty good right now but let's continue through and uh, get this to look perfect. So what we can do is we can come into our directories here. And what we can do is we can take, let's actually delete this folder, and that'll go away. Great. So what we can do is we can take the, the hair, strands, materials, and the, uh, the skull cap, and um, we can actually go ahead and browse and bridge here to make things a little bit faster. So here in Bridge, we can come in and we can select all the hair strand materials. And we can do a Control Shift R. And go ahead and rename hair strands to just hair. And then using a Mari based workflow, Arnold is a since it's used by production uh, companies, they are uh, they're pretty up on a lot of the uh, a lot of the different uh, nomenclature for Mudbox and Mari and ZBrush and different things like that. And so Arnold has developed directly into the renderer of uh, a strong workflow that allows you to work with uh, objects like that. So actually, these don't look like they got renamed. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. Hmm, and that should replace those names. Okay, so there's something that's preventing them from being changed. Ah, it's because Arnold is running. So Arnold locks your textures down while it's um, while it's operating. So if you turn them off and then you go ahead and flush the uh, Arnold caches, that'll kind of sort of unlock those textures and you'll be able to actually resave them and edit them and do different things with them. So now if we do a control shift R and then we go ahead and replace hair strands with hair, we're gonna have a nice renaming here. So that's great. And so what we can do is using um, a UDIM workflow, um, we can go ahead and name these textures in such a way that we specify that the hair strands are on one tile and the hair skull cap is on another tile. So the first tile um, in a Mari based workflow is 1001. So if we go ahead and specify that the hair strands are in the first UV tile, then we'll be golden. And then what we want to do is we want to specify that the skull cap is in the second UV tile. 
So we'll do a control shift R and this time we'll replace skull cap with hair. And that way these materials will basically have the exact same name as the others, but these materials will be in the second UV tile. So we'll use 1002. And in Mari, um, your tiles um, go up to 1009, and then 1010, I believe, is the next uh, UV tile up. So you only have 10 tiles in, uh, in, in Mari left to right. Although in something like Maya or something like uh, Cinema 4D, you, you can have like a lot more than that. But um, naming your tiles this way would also allow you to be able to take this into Mari pretty easily and import these in and, and just paint on them as well. But anyway, with um, those naming changes made, that means that Arnold will be able to look and will be able to see that, oh, this is uh, the first UV tiles opacity and then this is going to be the second tiles UV opacity. And you can specify uh, just this single name and it'll actually look and it'll find both materials on your, your uh, hard drive and render them both at the same time without, without, with you only having actually set up one network. Which is pretty incredible. So what we'll do in the uh, hair material now is now that we've set that up, We'll come in here, and instead of this being hair strands diffuse, we'll just be it'll just be test of hair diffuse. But we want it to specify we want to specify two different UV uh, two different um, images for the uh, for the uh, material. So what we can do is we can use um, a token, a uh, Arnold token uh, of UDIM. And that will let Arnold know that we want to use Mari's naming convention for textures. And so this will basically go and it'll grab any textures with that correct numbering convention. So you can have hundreds of textures, thousands of textures for a particular character. And Arnold will automatically be able to go through and find all of them and properly texture your char character. And you really only need one material on your character. And this works really well when you have a character where all the materials have mostly the same properties. Or you've painted all the properties uh, through a painting program and you don't have to worry about actually specifying special properties in your shaders. So. With all of that set up, now it'll be able to actually find and use all of the textures. Now what we want to do is we want to correct our actual uh, material itself. First of all in here, um, the texture tag has an offset of 100% in the V, um, and that just came from Daz. It basically bumps the, uh, the tile up a little bit for the, um, the hair. I also have a layout production UV layout where I can actually have my production workflow but I can also access my textures here on the second monitor. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the hair which is going to give me the UVs for that. And basically what I want to do is I want to have the hair strands in UV tile 1 and I want to have the skull cap in UV tile 2. So all I'm going to do is just grab the skull cap and I'm just going to move it over one tile. Hit apply. And now I've got the hair strands in the correct UV and I've got the skull cap in the correct UV. And so if I were to render this now after I hit save, we should have the correct um, look here in the viewport but we are only using one material and we're taking advantage of multiple tiles on that, that model. This is actually quite a nice way to work, especially considering that this particular uh, object does happen to have two separate components in one polygon object. So 
this is a really great way to actually kind of sort of work with the hair. Um, this also works really well, once again, with the body, especially um, if you looked at one of my earlier tutorial tutorials where I actually split the character up into multiple UV tiles. Um, this workflow would be a great way to work with a character where it's split up like that. Um, and it looks like our render failed. So let's do hit Shift C and let's open up the console and see exactly what happened to our render here. Could not read tile zero zero with index one hundred one file name hair strands. All right, so we just didn't change the file name correctly. So let's come in here. We did that for this. Um, for this, we did okay. That we did okay. The bump. We didn't change the name for the bump. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's try to re-render, and there we go. Perfect UVs, but now everything is kind of sort of cleaner. And so that's uh, that's just using Mari, either you're using Mari patches, or if you've got a mud box workflow, and if I can find a model where I've used a mud box workflow before, I like to paint in Mudbox, uh, mostly because Mari doesn't really work very well on my uh, computer. So if we come in here to Testa here really quickly and uh, see, we we'll go and look at, uh, say, more me, for instance, my uh, character that I've been working on for a while now. Alrighty, so here we are in uh, her Mudbox uh, file folder where I've painted some stuff in Mudbox. And, uh, you know, you can see right here that the naming convention for, for Mudbox is U1V1 um, as opposed to Mari's naming convention where it's a, where it's a, a number 1000 blah 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 blah. So, Arnold has a numbering convention, as, uh, a token as well for uh, being able to do that with uh, Mudbox files. If we go here to our Arnold help and we go to the user guide and let that load up um, and then we were to type in something like UDIM and we're looking for the Mar uh, for the uh, Cinema 4D user guide. We come in here you know, it tells us exactly how UDIMs work. And uh, if we go to tile, this is more for, this is a mud, this is mud box. So it'll tell you exactly how you want to name those and it'll work out. And that's great. There's also some, some more tokens as well. So you got tile and this is how it's going to work. So this is for mud box. So if you're exporting stuff out of mud box, um, that'll work directly. I just like the naming convention that uh, Mari uses a little bit better. It's simpler. Um, but okay. So in our next tutorial, like I said, I'll finish uh, texturing her up and then uh, we'll go over a little bit um, some of the, uh, the little unique things about some of the textures on this character, like the eyes, for instance. We're going to go over a little bit of you know what I'm gonna do about the specular and the and the corona or cornea um, a little bit of how we're gonna do the uh, fingernails a little bit of a hint um, you probably want to duplicate the uh, the limbs and then you're gonna want to go ahead and add some extra specular because those are gonna be a little bit shinier than the regular limb material um, but uh, yeah, mostly the eyes, and then we'll go into how to optimize uh, for Arnold. Arnold has a special texture format, and we'll go into how to optimize these textures really quickly and easily using C4D to A to get a much faster render. All right, so see you guys there.